Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. It has been long since we have talked about the upgrades and various progress which has been recently made across the LSE to counter the Chinese PLA army. Through our series of fortification of LSE, we keep informing you about the Indian military preparedness. With this note, let's start our 7th episode of fortification of LSE. Now before we talk further, I want to share the pictures of the other side of LSE that is Chinese side of LSE. The reason for sharing this picture is to compare how Indian army treats its soldiers and how PLA army treats them. You might have seen the amazing technologies from drone to air conditioned room to hot meals and even lip balm supplied to PLA army across LSE. But what you are seeing now is the ground reality of the other side. Now let's move focus towards Indian Army. What you see in front of you is a 3D printed permanent defenses at the line of actual control in Eastern Ladakh that can even withstand direct fire from a tank. Indian Army's engineer in chief, Lieutenant General Harpal Singh said that the permanent defenses are able to withstand blasts and can be erected within 36 to 48 hours and relocated from one place to another. The 3D printed permanent defenses have been constructed for the first time by Indian Army Corps of Engineers in the desert location. These defenses were trial tested against a range of weapons from small arms to the main gun of T-90 tank. A 3D printed shelter for officers and junior commissioned officers has been constructed in desert sector and four more such double story shelters are also being constructed in the eastern theater at Zuluk. Each shelter can accommodate 64 personnel and construction will take just 25 days. Now last year in winter, Indian Army had built barrel type shelters and fast erectable modular shelters FEMS at forward locations near the line of actual control in Ladakh. These FEMS can be erected in a week's time and can accommodate 80 to 40 troops during extreme winters when temperature falls to minus 35 to 40 degrees. The state of art habitat is integrated with arrangements for electricity, water, heating facilities, health and hygiene. The troops in the front line are accommodated in heated tents as per the tactical consideration of their deployment. The next important development is related to Indian Air Force, which is in process of upgrading its coverage along the border with China from Ladakh to Arunachal Pradesh. The mountainous northern and northeastern frontier gives easy passage to low-flying objects such as helicopters, UAVs and even fighter jets as the radar signals are obstructed. Therefore, Air Force is moving ahead with Rs 10,000 crore plan to further enhance the capability to monitor activities across the line of actual control. So under this plan, Indian Air Force wants to acquire high-powered radars and around 20 low-level transportable Ashwini radars. Talking about Ashwini radar, they are also known as low-level transportable radar or LLTR. It is a rotating active phased array multifunction 4D radar capable of automatic detection and tracking of aerial targets ranging from fighter jets to slow moving targets. The system has been instrumented for a range of 200 kilometers and is able to detect 2 square meter RCS from a range of 150 kilometers with altitude covering from 30 meters to 15 kilometers. The radar operates either in steering or rotation mode. In rotation mode, the antenna rotates at 7.5 to 15 rotation per minute with surveillance coverage of 360 degrees in azimuth and 40 degrees in elevation. In a steering mode of operation, the antenna steers in a specified azimuth with surveillance coverage of plus minus 60 degree in azimuth and 40 degree in elevation. The radar is based on solid state active aperture phased array with digital beam forming and has electronic scanning capability in both azimuth and elevation. The coverage is attained using wide transmit beam and multiple receive beams in both azimuth and elevation. It can also be used 
for any ship borne radar applications this was today's update please let us know your views on this in comment section if you like the video do not forget to like share and subscribe with this i would like to say goodbye and jai hind we'll soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in the defense sector